Hi, I'm Xiao. Today I want to talk about this book, Paper Tales, which I just read a couple of months ago. This video will contain some materials from the book, but nothing related to the plot or characters. If you haven't read the book, please decide whether you want to watch this. I see you're still with me. So there are three metaphors of life, which are also the name of the three parts of this book. The strings, the grass, and the vessel. I want to first talk about my understanding, so you know what I am basing my discussions on. I think strings are meant to be what controls a person. It points out our lives are how we control ourselves and make decisions. And we lose that ability over time. When every string breaks, we die. For me, this is a new perspective in some way. But I strongly feel this is not a whole story. We do not start with a full set of strings and they break over time. We start with few strings, in fact. We get more of those as we grow and learn, or else it would not make sense. The problem I have with this metaphor is, if you can get new strings, then the string must be able to be repaired and you can have new ones in place of the old ones broken. Thus, a stringless state is not irreparable. I think grass is a metaphor of connection, that we live in groups, families, and cultures. Life is a survival of our ideas, our memories. While this is my domain of study, this metaphor is out of topic of this video, because I want to discuss life as physical individuals interacting. And this metaphor is simply about a different thing. I think a vessel's existence is a separation of inside and outside, we and our environment. And the crack is what we lose in time. When we lose things, we begin to see the outside world, and we eventually die because of all the losses we've had. I find this metaphor terribly inconsistent with my observations. It's just not only through losses we get to see things. Positive feedbacks is also important for our life and our choices. When we gain, we are able to associate what we did with good. But that's not even the point. You see, good and bad cannot exist without the other. When we value something more, we value everything else a bit less. And when we value something less, we value everything else or the absence of that thing more. And that is the reason the metaphor of vessel must be self-inconsistent. Both gain and loss make us learn. There are experiences. As we have more experiences, we learn more. And because what we see is a projection of ourselves to the real world, as we learn, we simply refocus our selective attention to different things than we used to. So we, in fact, can become not seeing something through our experiences. Another problem that I have is, it might be intuitive to say dying is an accumulation of losses. But if you think of it, dying is only the loss of one thing, life. Accumulating experiences, again, not just losses, is the process of aging. And people can die of non-aging related causes as well. But if you are talking about the dying of a mind, it would make sense to see it as an accumulation of emotional losses. Emotional losses can make people more and more close to changes, thus to the state of unchangeable, death. However, you can only get close to mental death, but you cannot achieve it in a healthy brain. By definition, it takes incapable to learn to become incapable of being changed, which I'm going to go with that's just a mental disorder we will occur in time. And I cannot stress this enough. It is your choice to be more open or close to opinions when you experience something. So my answer would be, I want to use a different metaphor for this definition of life. Life is comprised of the duration of time we live in. The metaphor of time should be sunlight. Sunlight is equal to everyone likes the 24 hours we all have. It is the energy that allowed us to exist, to live and do things. But sometimes in life we feel boredom, we feel tired. You see, when you are cold, sunlight makes you feel warm. But when you are not cold, sunlight just makes you feel hot. The time we are entitled to have are such things. You can use it to do whatever you wish, yet people fool around with no purpose. 
people get to fear the sunlight because it's hot out there sometimes. Just like in life, there are things make you happy and things make you hurt. And people grow into avoiding risks of getting hurt. The thing with not taking risks, not allowing yourself to get hurt is, you never even feel that pain when you lost the opportunity for something when you're avoiding risks. If you avoid the very sunlight that have given you life and everything, your whole world just become a lot narrower. You live with people you know well, you do things you are good at, and before you know it, you become easily offended by people unfamiliar and you give out new things in them. And you never get to see those beautiful things or enjoy those wonderful experiences because you never find out they existed. I'm not saying you shouldn't fear anything or you shouldn't base your judgment on previous experiences. That's okay. That's what it means to know. But to be afraid of things unknown, to stop accepting new things, to stop improving yourself, make you dice inside. So do something. Make your life comfortable with whatever good or bad that comes out of it. Embrace the sunlight like you would on a cold early spring day. Thanks for watching. And as always, the FDBA.